Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now that we all know as freshwater anglers, one of the best baits you can get is the humble lobworm. But more recently, some guys actually got in touch with me and said, Graham, did you realise one of the best baits you can get are prawns? And I thought about it, hang on, it sounds like this is a new fashion prawns. Now, back in the late 1960s, I'm talking about 68, 69, I was publishing articles on catching chub on prawns, or rather shrimps. Now these were small, very small brown shrimps, but they still had all the bat and the legs on them. And I've not been able to find those anywhere recently. We used, used to be able to buy them from just a wet fishmonger slab, as they were called. And they had all these things with cockles and mussels, all the shellfish, different clams, and they had these brown shrimps. They were unbelievable for catching chub. However, the prawns these guys are talking about now are the ones that we eat in a salad. Yes, peel prawns. I thought, I have caught on them before, just a couple of times I've used them. They need a real test, okay? So I went to the Royal Berkshire Fishery, never been there before in my life, just pulled it up on the internet. I thought, you know what, I'll give this one a go. It's a regular day ticket fishery, it's not private. Anybody can go there, pay a day ticket and go there. I thought, I'm going to fish two rods. I'm going to have a little battle here, battle of the baits, if you like. Prawns versus lobworm. Wow, I think I'd better have two different techniques of fishing them just to keep my options open. This is what I'm going to be using. Okay, I'm going to be using two rigs. I'm going to be ledgering almost three lining with these prawns. I'm going to be using a hook, wait for this, five or six, I think I'm on six pound pro gold line. Um, I found quite hard wearing line. I'm going to be using there, if you can see that, a single BB shot. Yes, that's right, that's it. So I'm threading my main line through the rod rings. If I would, I just had to be using this line, so I always use six pounds. I've then got a BB shot, and I'm putting that, let's say, 12 inches from the hook, and I'm gonna put a prawn on there. That is my rig, so I'm free lining, and that just adds enough weight to make it sink to the bottom. I can just barely, barely tighten up against it with my rod top, my bobbin, and my buzzer. So that's the ledger prawn taken care of. Then I'm gonna be float fishing the lobworm using a good old fashioned bodied waggler. So a wag, waggler is a very long float like this, and bodied, it's bodied here, so it gives you the bolt to take the shot. And on here, I don't know if you're gonna see this or not, is a sort of rubber valve sleeve, and on the end of that is a hole through which you thread the line. Now, most floats already have a hole under there to thread the line through, but this one enables you to pull this, I won't pull it right off, is you can pull this off and pop another float on there. So you don't have to cut everything to pieces and re-rig again. Don't forget the float is going to sit just like this, right down to there. Now, I've bulk shotted this, because it obviously takes pretty good uh, pretty good weight, because it's got the, the bulk of the sort of balsa in here. I've got a swan shot there, a BB, and that's what's called a locking shot. I'm gonna drop the float out. You can see it swinging at the bottom. Now you should be able to see, it really doesn't matter what shot, you use double A, triple A, whatever shot you want really to cock, as long as the float is cocked and you've plumbed the depth, so it's just sitting on the bottom. Now, I'm not using any hook links, I'm going straight through again with the six pound, but near the hook I will be using, it says looking for the hook. Another shot just here. I'm gonna be using that and I want it about Eight inches, I would guess. So I want, I want to, I want to, it's just fallen off now. I've really done it. I want that shot just laying on the lake bed, just barely, barely on the lake bed. So I know this is down and the fish can pick this up. They don't feel anything at all. And they can move off sort of four or five inches before registering on the float. So generally the float will go on a slightly sideways motion as it slides away, rather than popping through straight down vertically, it's gonna tip on its side a little bit and go away because I'm fishing it very slightly over depth to allow for any wind. And it's supposed to be windy tomorrow, that's why I'm doing all this tackle talk inside the night before. However, with the prawns, I know you're gonna be using barbless hooks at this fishery. With the prawns, I found some hooks called, which I reckon are just the right shape. 
We're not selling them. These are gardener tackle ones and they are called either mug or mugger. I don't know what that means there. It's all gobbledygook. It's either mug or maybe that's supposed to be an A called a mugger. But it, this is, they come in a pack of 10 curved shank hooks, size six barbless. Okay, so there I throw it away. That's them. That's, that's, that's what they're called, they're muggers. But just look, if you can, at the shape of that hook there. It's really weird. I have it, well, no idea where I got them from in my tackle box, but I just like the shape of those because they almost match a sort of curved shape of those prawns I'm going to be using. It doesn't really matter for the worm, but if you do use a lob worm, make sure you don't just hook it on here around the hook and up the shank, because don't forget, it's barbless. They just wriggle straight off. That's the end of that. The fish take them. You're sitting there with a bare hook. So always pop at least two sections up over the eye of the hook there. So that should pinch your bait on and you shouldn't you know, have it coming off. Let me show you the baits I'm going to be using. Right, ground bait is banned. Bread is banned. Loads of stuff is banned at this fishery, as there are many fisheries. But right, you're allowed to use sweet corn. So I'm going to be using for loose feed, just plain, as cheap as I can get, sweet corn for my loose feed. I won't be using that on the hook. I'm just going to be using prawn versus lobworm. But this should help bring in the small fish and hopefully that feeding attracts the bigger fish. So get yourself the cheapest one you can. Supermarkets, I don't bother with tins anymore. I think it was a pound for an entire bag here from one of those freezer centers and that's a one kilo bag. That's more than enough I'd say for a day's fishing. A pint of maggots. I've got red and white mix there. Both together, please don't tell my wife that I've got live maggots inside the house. She doesn't even know they're in the fridge because I cover them over with bits of lettuce and stuff like that. So she thinks they're just salad. One day, I'm gonna be eating these. I would think they'd be served up. She won't know what she's doing. Okay, lobworms, you can dig your own. It's very dry at the moment. I made a rash statement of going to the tackle shop and saying, where can I get some lobworms? They said, you can buy them from us. Now you can, you get quite a few lobworms, and to be honest, for the sake of a few pounds, it's hardly worth, look at these ones, look, they're big, big lobworms. It's hardly worth digging them. That's probably bigger than I can actually dig. And I tell you, in this dry weather, they go down very deep. So if you're really stuffed and you haven't got much time in your hands, just go in the tackle shop and buy a tub of worms. And then you can obviously spill it all over the pool table and get into even more trouble with the worm. Then, most expensive thing of all, Prawns, get yourself some peeled prawns. These are cooked and peeled North Atlantic prawns. And there they are, they're about four pounds a pack, they're not cheap, but so anybody who's not using them, they are good baits in their own right, use them for bream and stuff before. These are the prawns. Okay, so you can feed them in loose. They're nice and big, but let's just dump those down there. You might be able to see, if I just hold it like that, that sort of curved shape of it. And look at this mug or mugger hook or whatever it's called. Maybe somebody out there knows what these hooks are used for, but they're obviously used for a specific way of carp fishing. I have no idea at all. All I know is that looks like it's going to thread on there pretty nicely. So you've got to thread these over very carefully because they break up. Now, let me thread this one on first and then I'll just, I'll just show you something. I just barely, barely pop it. I'm not casting these a long way. I'm going to be fishing in the margins. You can see that pretty well covers the hook there. And don't forget the same principle. This has got the weight of this on the bottom, but that got the weight of that BB to just tighten up. And I'm going to be fishing with the bobbin on top of that. But let me show you this. Obviously, I do a lot of sea fishing. Inside here, I'll, I'll turn it around. There's the hook shape of the pool. Well, inside here is, if you like, their gut, their tract. Sometimes it's got like dirt in it. Most people sort of pull it off of their finger now. But that's a hole through the centre. So when you thread the hook on, it could break off quite easily. So I like to go in through the hole, if that makes sense, but come out slightly on the side of the meat. It's just a little bit firmer on either side. Hoping you can see that, guys. It's just a little totally awesome tip from years ago. Because don't forget, I used to use these about this size. The brown shrimps, unpeeled, and they had all spikes on them and legs. They were absolutely brilliant. The chub loved them. I used to fish on the royalty a lot for those who catch chub. So there you go. We've got lobworms here, prawns there. Let's get to this fishery and bear in mind guys, I've never fished down there before. 
give it a go and just see which bait's going to come out. Old school, or let's call these fairly modern school. It is the big match. Lobworm versus prawn. <coughs> Sounds like a horse. Maybe it's a seahorse. There's sort of advantages and disadvantages to go into a water that you've never been to before. Now this fishery, Royal Barts fishery, I'd never been to, it's a regular day to get water. So you have to look around and basically, you know, just feed it and try and get some bait in the water and attract the fish to you. But you also have to try and, you know, target an area that your instincts tell you should hold fish. You know, on this particular lake I fish I suppose you call it the third lake. Um, I think they call it the match lake, I'm not sure. I thought the matchmen aren't gonna fish, you know, too far out. Generally people fish out by islands, they cast out by the islands. So I'm putting some sweet corn and some maggots into an area where I think, you know, the, the matchman might fish, it's sort of, I think they call it a line. And then I'm gonna follow up and put some uh, prawns out as well throw a few loose prawns. Now prawns are quite expensive obviously because they are for, they've been peeled, they've been cleaned, they've been prepared, they're for human consumption. So I'm not gonna buy a bucket of them, am I? You know, it's too expensive. You just need to throw in six, eight or 10, maybe a dozen just to get them started. And I'm doing two swims, one sort of, you can imagine to the left, this one to the right, and I'm using a feature here, which is some rushes and some overhanging bushes. That's always a good spot to try. So on the left hand side, I'm using lobworms and I'm just swinging it out. You can just see I've only literally just swung it out. Well, not more, more, more I suppose about rod length, just to get near, a little bit of overhang, maybe six, eight feet from the bank with that waggler float. And you can see it's pipped right down there. And you can actually see a little bit of drag on the surface with the bubbles going past it. And that shows you that's why I use that single BB, say six, eight or 10 inches from the hook, just to basically just anchor any bait there. You can see the ripples coming into my bank quite hard. If I had shot that was suspended in the water, then that would possibly drag the lobworm along the bottom. You know, I might, I might not catch, but I just didn't want to fish like that. I like to have that lobworm anchored on the bottom. Then on the other side of the swim, look, you can see how close I'm fishing, watch the cast. You can barely call that a cast. It's a rod length, if, I've, if that, I just swing it out, with a prawn on the other side, sit down and see what happens. Well, I maybe waited about 45 minutes and then the bobbin just raced up against the rod butt, set the alarm off. I have to get out my huge trawl net that I have to use there and uh, net this fish, but what a fish it is on the prawn. Well, here we go, guys. While the wind's down, I was on the telephone and we got a really nice perch on the prawn. Guys, you want to see this perch? Really, really nice fish. In fact, there you go with barbless. I was messing around, the hook's falling out. Let me show you this fish. Oh, it's a bit lost in that keep net, in that landing net. That is a chunker. He's been through the wars, he looks like he's been in the net before. A really nice perch on prawn. Couldn't ask any better than that, really. Great fishing, you need it back. So, lobworm still out on the float. First blood to the prawn. Now you would think after catching that beautiful perch that I'd be happy. Well I sort of was, I was happy, but hey, I've never fished this place before and then I get to hook into this. Yes indeed, it's the prawn going for a second goal if you like. But hang on, it's not a perch this time. 
It's a pretty nice bream. Who would have thought you could get bream on prawns? Well, yeah, you can. Well, I keep missing bites on the worms, on the lobworm. I've tried float fish in the prawn, nothing. But just look what the ledger prawn's thrown up. There you go. A nice bream, though. I know they like prawns. I've had a few bream before. And that just goes, it's not a bad bream, I suppose. He's not a million miles away from maybe three pounds. Nice fish to catch. So it's prawns to lobworm, unfortunately, nil. So that's a really nice two pound perch. Actually weighed that one and a bream. Could I catch anything else on these baits? This time, it was the turn of the waggler float and it comes up with a lobworm, albeit a big hook and what looks like a rud, could be a rud roach, maybe it's a cross because they do get some big roach in there, but a beautiful looking fish. Back it goes, two, one, and do you know what? That's three different species from the one swim. So obviously, pretty good day to go water this place. I like to see diversity and I tell you what, I like to fish in those margins. If anybody said, where would you really fish long distance or margins? It's always in the margins. Look how I've sunk the rod top underneath the waves. Waves? They ripple scram. Go to spec savers. But you can see how I've sunk the rod. That stops that bobbin beeping and beeping all the time that you might be getting little wavelets and ripples hitting the rod top or the line and giving you a false bite. You generally just get like a single beep and you know that's probably, probably drag. The float on the other hand, in a different type of rod rest, it's on a 13 foot match rod. You can see if I pan left, there's a little red flow, maybe three, four feet away from uh, the edge of those overhanging trees there. Um, and most, I guess I'm about six feet out. I'm in about four feet of water. So pretty shallow, really. Right, well, the wind's picked up and I've moved from the bottom lake where I had the perch and the bream just to get a bit warmer and I've come up here at the top end of I guess the first lake with the winds off my back I've uh, thrown some maggots in some sweet corn trying to get any perch coming around any small fish so we just got to give it a go same situation float out to the right and ledged uh, prawn on the left got prawns in the swim maggots in the swim sweet corn in the swim it's all there waiting who knows what's going to come along? I've got no idea. I've never even been here before, but already I'm loving it. <laughs> you see what I mean about missing fish, don't you? Oh, that's on half a worm. I actually bumped that one. I'm just rather concerned because Nigel, the local tackle shop, uh, where I come from, he did tell me there's some big roaches of two pounds in here. And if they start eating the worm and I'm missing those, <gasps> Fancy missing a worm, uh, missing a worm of two pounds? That's a big worm. Missing a roach of two pounds on a worm. Is it going to be on the lobworm? Is it going to be on the prawn? Keep watching and see what comes next. Well, guys, you can see by the uh, bend in the match, well, I've got the big carp on the end. I don't know if I've got to get it up or not. I thought it was the, the roach or the perch to end all perch. So if I can get this fish out, it's a nice carp on a lobworm. It could bust me at any time in a match rod. And trust me, it's buckled over. It's not what a match rod is supposed to be looking like. Uh, net?
I say. Not bad for a match rod. I think you'll agree. And a lobworm. Wow, what a session. Nice roach, bream, a whack of a perch, and now a really big carp. Maybe go close to a double, I don't know. people I've been catching small perch like this just down the corner in there we're throwing some mags corn in I've missed two pretty good bites here on prawn just it's just so enclosed here I'm having trouble striking and getting tangled up and getting a bit uh, a bit twitchy like you do when you're fighting with bushes more than fish so I think I'm gonna call it quits in this swim I've got a feeling I'm gonna to have to tough it and go back down right at the bottom of that first lake where I started where it's windy and it will be cold but I just got the feeling they've been left a little bit longer now, a couple of hours, there might be some fish moved in there and I'm going to give it the last two hour shot and see if I can't get something because I wouldn't mind another big perch, I have to say. Anyway, you can see at the moment, lobworms are on top but that's only because I've started snipping them in half and um, using them small and getting small perch so it sort of doesn't really count, I think it's too all at the moment. So decider, all to play for, Let's get all this gear moved again. Well, the wind was up and down like a yo-yo today. One minute's a ripple, the next minute, next minute it's absolutely flat, glassy calm. Anyway, I persevered, and that move back down to that swim was again worthwhile. The wind eased off, and there you go, another fish to the lobworm. It was turning into a really good session. That's the trouble, filming and fishing on your own. You're trying to concentrate, you're looking at the camera, you're looking here, you're looking there, all of a sudden the float's gone, beep, 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 bang, something bizarre happens, and boy, does it this time. Two at once. You can even hear the bite alarm go off as I switch the camera on. <laughs> Two at once, guys. Two on at the same time then. One was a really big fish. Yes indeedy, although that big fish shed the hook, I mean you couldn't see it from looking at the action there because I had two, they had the match rod bent over but the, the Avon ledger roll was absolutely bent double and that drag was being stripped. He went out underneath the bushes and unfortunately maybe he got a different leverage on a piece of tree root or something, the hook pinged out. But hey ho, occasionally I do get double fish hookups and I actually get double fish in the net. That wasn't a pee. I'm not disappointed because I've got a great fish here and that was on the lobworm and the float. And this one was on the float. Now that is a pretty looking carp you have to admit. So the perch have eluded me but boy the carp love prawns. They also love lobworm. I think it's actually 50-50. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show just about to go home in a little while. So after getting that carp, I mean man alive, I just walked straight up to the swim, put the bags down, had the worm up, cast it out, put it down, looked down here, looked up again, we've all done it. There's something missing. There's a lot of water there. There's no float. It gone. Bang. I got that carp. Listen, you never know. Last cast, first cast, who knows when those fish are going to take. Worse still, they kept taking and taking and taking. I'm really sorry about this, people I said I was going to pack up. I was telling porcupines. I had to have that last cast. And I think the prawn's going to come out on top.
eating the bite indicator now. There you go, people. I really must pack up soon. The camera never lies, does it? When it does, it says it's broad daylight, but it is actually dusk. Cracking days fishing, big perch, nice carp, bream, roach, and I didn't bring enough prawns. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you guys in the next episode. The number of times I've tried to pack up and I've had one of those fishermen's last casts. Have you had them? I can't stop having them. I've had 40 or 50 casts and they're all called last casts. Oh no, what am I going to tell these people? What am I going to tell them? You must forgive me, you must forgive me. The prawn's going crazy. see this fish guys, I think it's a little bit bigger. And what I do is I put the drag right up, but I've got it on back wide, like this, so I can let it go when I want. This feels very much like that animal fish I lost early on, that sort of weight to it. I hate losing fish I can't see. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Just want to see it first. Bone is a 14 stone perch. He's sick. Be in there with it soon. He's okay, he's not great, just a good scrapper. Give you a different angle on it. There we go. No wonders of filming alone, eh? Here's one thing I do hate huge, great big carp nets that you could use to sane a shoal of mackerel. Why? Why must we have this huge carp? I could get a 70 pound carp in this net. Maybe this is about 65 pounds, huh? You know when you play a fish a long time, you, you get that feeling in the pit of your stomach that the hook's about to ping out. A nice barbless hook just hanging there. It's not a big, a big fish as I thought, it's just a really good scrapper. Oh, I've got to get some more prawns. See these big nets, you just can't scoop at fish quickly, you can't get them. My arm's wearing out. Bad feelings might ping off. Come on, fish, make that arm ache. I want to fight. Think. <laughs> Success in every totally awesome and prawn packet. Yes. The, the hook's just fallen out in the net. Absolutely, it's gone through the mesh, coming out the other side. This one is, I would suggest, a nice double figure card. What I don't know it is lovely golden colours. I'm going to pick him up very high for you guys. Let me get a bit closer so I'm over the mat. Look at that one. Look at that one. I can't even take my glasses off of that one. Fish looks about 12 pounds, something like that, make a 14. That's a nice carp. That is a beauty. And the prawn wins out. For the 14th time, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show.